Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Welcome and welcome back. I'm here today to make some cute little paperclip notepads and I'm going to use my 6x6 papers. Yeah, uh, there you go, that's it. This is a request from one of my subscribers. So it just flips open, it's one of the little matchbook ones. You've got a cute little paper pad with 2 by 2 inch little squares of paper, roughly 2 by 2 inch. And I've just done a bit of collage, stuck a word on. So yeah, let's crack on. I mean, not, these are not only just handy for edge of pages, I've just remembered this is why I got this page out. Uh, over here, I've got a page with pockets. You can just tuck them anywhere, yeah? You can tuck them on edge of an inside pocket, they don't have to go on edge of a page. How cute are they? Right, put your book away, woman. Right. Did I say it's from 6x6 papers? I can't even remember. Yeah, uh, you can make them from 6x6 papers. This was a 6x6 paper before I mucked the first two up. Well, I didn't muck them up. I was working out measurements so that you now don't have to muck up your papers. Right, so I've got my 6x6 sheet. This is from Enchanted Forest by Graphic 45. It's gorgeous. This is some bits I've got left over from a mini album I did a while back. So pop it on your scoreboard. You want the top of the paper there, if it's directional, what you're using. And score at one and a quarter. We're going to score for all three notebooks at once. I just find it easier that way. Then we're going to score at three and five eighths. So one, two, three, four, five eighths. That's the mark between the half and the three quarters. <laughs> <laughs> struggle sometimes with your fractions like I do right move that so if then we fold that up fold that down oh that could be one huge matchbook pocket can not it really could but no we're going to cut it up so that we can make three of these so I'll grab my little trimmer so pop it on your scoreboard not your scoreboard your trimmer or use your scissors or whatever you're cutting with we want it upwards ways <laughs> upwards ways yeah is that even a thing i don't know could be it is now and cut it every two inches so i put in and managed to put four cut a piece off back to two cut a piece off then you end up with three pieces that are two by six that was a lesson in teaching your grandma how to suck eggs that weren't it telling you how to use a scoreboard hey ho right now we should have three little matchbook pockets with everything going the right way on the front yes the back's going to be upside down but you ain't going to see that oh yeah it's going to be up against your page that don't worry me when it's upside down on back right now's the time when you want to round corners and do inking if you're going to do that kind of thing i'm going to use the small corner rounder on this new punch i love it because this small one's smaller than it were on the other one so it's really good for teeny tiny things Right, if you want to round that one as then, which I think I will. I didn't on the other, but I think I will on this. Do that as well. So I'm just going to do all three at once. Ideal for a little mass make these, aren't they? I'm keeping mine in a little bit of a butterfly theme. Because all of you know, as you will have noticed, I've been making quite a bit of butterfly things again. Everyone's doing Christmas and winter and I'm like, nah, I want to do butterflies. Because I can. <laughs> I've missed boat on Christmas this year, so I was crafting goes, I really have. Right, so you know it's a shame to even decorate that, it's too nice. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Right, if you want to ink it as well, do your inking now. And as I'm a avid inker, I'm inking. I just like the look of it. I don't know why, I just do. When I used to make mini albums, I used to look at them. Just inking the edges, just give it a whole different look, and that's the look I like. If you're not an inker, don't ink. It looks just as good either way. I'm inking back as well for some strange reason. Right. Treat others, yeah. You can listen to me waffle while I ink 27 pieces of cardboard. I'm much more of a random inker than I used to be. I used to like tech forever about it. Now I'm just like, yeah, slap a bit on. Slap a bit on. I mean, well, why are we inking? Is it for an aged look? Partly, yeah. Is aging even all the way around? No. Aging's totally not even. 
I mean, my little fingers aren't aged half as much as my face. What's that all about? Hey ho. <laughs> right, that's three inked up. I'm going to grab my burn folder and do a little bit of scoring just to make sure they're not all sticking up like this. Hey, it's something a bit unique for me making three at once instead of doing one, another and then another. I'll see whether I can handle it. It might get too much for me. It's multitasking this, isn't it? Right, now, I did say this was a suggestion by a subscriber. Yes, it was. Can I remember the lovely lady's name? Can I act? Why is that? I used to say it's because I've had a sleep since then, but lately it's I've drawn a breath since then. I forget things so quick. So I do apologise. Please comment and let me know who you are. I mean, when this lady suggested this, I'm just grabbing some bits to collage with. I'm like, oh yeah, fabulous. I, I haven't. Fabulous idea. It's going to be my video tomorrow. And then I typed out a name about 10 times and I said, oh, that way I won't forget your name. Did it work? Did it echoes like? Well, I'm grabbing some. These are the tickets they're selling me at the shop. And when we come to end a roll or a miscount when I'm cutting and I get all these odd ones, they go in a box for my personal use. I think I want, oh, no, I don't know if I want that colour. Why well, can't I make a mistake with really nicer colours sometimes? <laughs> what colours I actually want? I think because I stick to a pretty... Ooh, that goes well, doesn't it? Pretty similar colour scheme a lot at times. I've already used all them colours up. We've got a brownie one, a pinky one. What I really, really wanted... So, tell me what I want, what I really, really want. I wanted some beige ones. Not that dark. So now I've just emptied my box all out table. Right. Let's uncover it all again now. So I'm going to do my little formula collaging as I call it. I'm just going to do all three pretty similar. Right, I like that bus ticket. I think that green goes lovely with green on book. Uh, but I can't do them all the same, can I? That would be just plain wrong. Plain wrong it would. That's one I've wheeled over with my chair, but we can still use it. We don't discriminate against uh, people in wheelchairs. We're not going to discriminate against people that have been wheeled over by chairs. Or people, I mean tickets. That was just random. And I think I'll go for another green one. I said I weren't going to go for green, but I want to. Right, so they'll all get a ticket each. They're all going to get a word. I've been cutting... A few of my random words out by eclectic eggplant so I keep forgetting to link. I've got joyless. Joyless. <laughs> joyless. Let's do some joyless crafting. Joyous, fearless. I don't want to escape. We don't really need to escape because we love what we're doing. Joyous, fearless. Oh, what do I want? What do I want? Well, I'm thankful. See, let's, yeah. That's a much bigger word. There are bigger words on that one. Tell you what, let's. I want thankful in a small one, but it's not there. I thought that would like pay homage to it being Thanksgiving for all of you in the US tomorrow. And do you have you have a different Thanksgiving, don't you, in Canada? Have we already had that? I don't know what you're giving thanks for. We don't learn stuff like that in history or geography at school. I can tell you an awful lot of stuff about drainage basins and how rivers uh, flow towards sea, which I've found absolutely useless throughout my life. But Lord forbid they'd actually learn us about the world and the planet. To be fair, they do do a little bit more of that at school now. Anyway, I'm not going in moaning mode today. <laughs> I did enough moaning, didn't I, last video? Enough moaning to last a week. So, yes, I shall be joyous, fearless and thankful and I will breathe. Yeah, I just really wanted to put thankful on these. Although I could have saved that for a project tomorrow. But I don't know if I'm doing a project tomorrow because I don't know what day tomorrow is. Oh, tomorrow's Wednesday, isn't it? This is Tuesday. This is why I don't film ahead, people. I don't know what day it is at best of times. Yeah, I think I like them words being a bit bigger. 
So yeah, it's Tuesday, isn't it? So it's not Thanksgiving till Thursday. So is that the 25th? Yeah, Thanksgiving's 25th. Oh, just ignore me. It's gone from waffle to inane ramblings of a mad woman. So we'll have thankful, grateful, and breathe. Remember to breathe, yeah? So pretend you breathe, you forget something else. Then I'm going to grab a bit of... That's the world's teeniest bit of music paper I've got left. This is a digital one, this. You can get this on my Buy Me A Coffee site. It is free. There's no obligation to buy me a coffee, although it will not be refused if you want to. All donations greatly received. I'm saving up for a laptop at minute. Mine is getting so slow. But it's been a very good workhorse. It has served me well and it is still serving me well even if it's serving me a little bit slower than it used to. Right, I'm going to have a little bit of green paper on each. I just sometimes find it easier like this. It's a little bit of a mass make, mass collage. Do the same thing on everything. Each one is still going to look individual and different because your pieces are different shapes and sizes. You're going to place them in slightly different places. Right, that's all that inked. I'm not inking the individual collage bits. Right, because it's only tiny as well, I'm not going to mess with my glue stick. I'm going to put these on with my tacky glue, which is here somewhere. Here we go. I've just put my pin in it for now to keep it clear. It doesn't keep it, that hole's a bit too big on the sugar bell bottle to always keep a pin on it. I normally use these. I couldn't get hold of any of those knitting needle covers that a lot of people use for these, especially over in the US. So I got these, the caps for Apple pencils. They were like a couple of pounds for a bucket full of eBay. It used to be tuppence a bucket full, that's inflation for you. I've been watching a fabulous programme while I've been crafting. I can't watch crafting while I'm crafting at the minute because I get too distracted. I want to make what they're making and lose interest in what I'm making. So I just watch all sorts. I've been watching a programme from 2010 it was. And it's about the... it's called Turn Back Time. And it's about the high street. Uh, I watched... I was watching another one about when the... Yeah, they sent families to live in that time to see how it was to live. This one was particularly to see, let families see how it was to be traders in that time. So they sent a butcher back, an ironmonger, and first week they were living in Victorian times. Then it was Edwardian. Then we had the, uh, did they do the 30s next, which was the advent of... Uh, cheap mass produced sugary items. Oh, I don't want that to match. I don't want that on there. Where am I going to put that now? Uh, I'm going to just put it on a piece of. Uh... There you go. Then that'll just get collaged on something else another time. We already a backing piece on. Yeah, I picked the wrong one up, haven't I? Is that one I want? Silly woman. That's because I'm rambling about 1930 and sugar. I got all excited. I was on a sugar high. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, they sent a greengrocer. It, it was really an, a seamstress. And I can't even remember the original point of what I was saying. Do you know that? I have no idea. I'm going to put that on that side. She says, moving it all over, spreading the glue about. Well, I've no idea what we're on about. Oh, that were it. <laughs> no, I don't have. I don't know. I've lost it. So yeah, I'll tell you about this program. And in the last one, they were comparing the prices in 1970, which was the last program they did. Got the shopkeepers trading as though they were in the 1970s high street. They were comparing them to modern prices. Now, bearing in mind this program was made in 2010. 
And something that really hit home to me was it said that the average household spends 10% of their income on food. I'm like, what? It shocked me. And I did look up how much of their income the average UK household now spends on food. And it's supposedly something like 40%. It's like, wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Have prices really gone it up? But yeah, they probably have. Inflation has been that high. It's like, wowza. I'm not even sure what percentage of our income I spend on food. But I think it's probably above the 30. Whee. Right. Yeah, I think I finished that story. <laughs> I think I finished story. I'm not quite sure. Right, so there we go. That's going to look a little bit wrinkly until it dries. But if you look at this one, now it's dried. Only thing you can see there is edge it ticket. I've stuck it over. Right, I think I want a bit of ink on this one because it's got white edges. I know I said I wasn't inking these bits, but I obviously fibbed to you, didn't I? A fib is a lie, a lie. Yeah, lately I've started to use a lot of terms that people in the US just don't understand. I think it's because I'm more comfortable in doing my filming, so I'm being I'm speaking more like I would normally in real life, and not realizing just how much I want to say, or like local terms, or and sometimes by local I don't even mean just down to country, uh, just down to local area like Yorkshire or neighbouring counties. Oh, and Melina, yeah, I've read your comment. I just need to get my laptop out to answer it. Because it's going to be a long answer. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I'm using Southern American terms as well, it would seem. But I think that is down to watching a lot of Melina's videos. That's Melina Pilant, Me Crafty Scrapper. You can find a link in all my MS Scrap Busters videos. And I think a lot of you have come over from Melina, haven't you? So you know who she is anyway. Which is fabulous. So yeah, I've got to uh, improve my southern pronunciation. I'll tell you now where it is as well. I talked to her, my friend Cheryl in Oklahoma a lot on video chat. So yeah, I'm picking up Alabama accent and Oklahoma accent, mixing it in with a bit of Yorkshire. Yeah, and it makes for some pretty, pretty strange words. Right. I quite like that. As you can see, thoughtless collage. I, I'm not really thinking too much about where I put things. I'm just slapping them down. I seem to collage better like that. If, I'm, if I've got quiet, peace and quiet, and I start to collage and think too much about it, it goes horribly wrong. Right, so, I've got that little bit of collage on the front. Um, I did put a little bit of lace under this one. I think I might want a bit of hessian or something under this. Let's grab my horrendously messy box of bits. It's this one. If you've not seen it, hold on to your seats if you don't like mess. Whoa. Yeah, I want something like this. Look like that. I just save everything in here. It really doesn't need going through because I would say a quarter of it just needs bin, to be quite honest. But it's why all my interesting, slightly different bits end up. Or if you just wanted that, I wouldn't get the big roll out and cut that off. No way would I. Bit of lace. Oh, bit of lace. I was watching a video by... Yeah, by someone whose name I can't remember off... Uh, and now, oh my word. Yeah, can't remember. Brain's gone. Why am I videoing? Who am I? What am I doing? <laughs> what day is it? Oh, we've already had what day is it? I've already forgot the day. Oh, a bit of, a bit of muslin. That's nice and flat enough. A bit of ribbon. I did want a little bit more of that white hessian, but I can't see any. And no, I'm not getting the roll out. What's that? Oh, that's some hessian that's got like a 
backing on that helps it stick easier. That's good. Well, shut box, we've got enough now. It really could stay in there all day. In fact, one day I need to, to sort it out. Right. Right, before doing that bit, I'm going to do the staples on the bottom. So, I'm going to use my Timothy Holt's Tiny Attacher, because it's the first one I grabbed. And I'm just going to staple up about a quarter of an inch. And you can put one in the middle, but I prefer to put two, just to make sure it's going to hold enough. Yeah, that's what then allows you to do that, if you've not made matchbooks before. There you go. See why I'm waiting a little bit to do it while that dries. But I'm going to tuck that in before I do it. That can continue to dry while we stick something on the bottom. So put you in. That's two done. About a quarter of an inch up, I just like to put a couple in. There we go. You could sew it, you could glue it. However you want to do it. I prefer staples. I'm a bit wary that if I glue it, it might come unglued, if that makes any sense. Then I want to put... I don't like that. I like this. Yeah. It doesn't need a big bit because we haven't got room for a big bit. But I like that. I think I'm going to glue this on to there. I'm still using my tacky glue. I'm trying to remember mm, not to use... I don't know that one. Hello, we've not heard from you in a while, have we, Gert? And no, no, it's changed much. You still know nothing. You know nothing, Gertrude. <laughs> if you've never watched Game of Thrones, there's a character in it called Jon Snow and his girlfriend in it. Says to him, you know nothing, Jon Snow. So it's a well-known like catchphrase. I love Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, yeah, that were a bit too Yorkshire. Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, very posh. And my kids got me one of those um, little figures. I'll be like Funko Pop figures of Jon Snow, and I've got him in my living room. And I scare him to death because every now and again I'll just randomly go, "You know nothing, Jon Snow," and go and point at him. And they're like, "Oh." <laughs> Just because, just because I can. Yeah, really like Jon Snow. And his little Funko Pop character is quite cute. So yeah, sounds like Gert is just like Jon Snow, knows nothing. I've no idea what I was saying when Gert piped in. And I've, I haven't got an actual clue. Uh, I said to one of my subscribers the other day who said she was binge watching my old videos. I says, right, if you're binge watching, if you come across me saying I need to do a project and you see that I've not done it, just please let me know because I am really good at doing that. I'll come up with an idea during a video and because I then don't write it straight down, I completely forget about it. I'm wondering, you know, if these words are still a bit big for these. I'm just going to crack on. Because I like the words. Just crack on, Julie. It'll be right. I think it'll look better when I get my butterflies on and balance it out. I'll maybe use bigger butterflies than I used on that one. Oh, flutterbys. Flutterbys. Eee. So you've got breathe, thankful and grateful. Yeah, let's get those stuck on now. I'm just going to use my art glitter for this because that's got a coating on and it won't need as much glue. Oh, I've just remembered. I've decanted some into a smaller bottle and to make my life easier. Oh, yeah. What you like. So I'm just going to use the back of the other one just to spread that out a bit. There you go. We really didn't need that much, did we? And then I'll pop that on there and it'll cover up those staples up front so you don't see them. 
I mean, if you don't mind looker staples, I don't mind looker staples on some projects. Depends what projects I'm doing. I'm watching Kyung Shotwell. She did a fabulous pocket, no glue, no tape, just staples. Absolutely brilliant. Right. I'm just gonna think, why has that one come off? And then that could be because you've not stuck it on yet. Just a thought. Yeah, we're we saying Jamson Gertrude, no nothing. I think I can make up the uh, trio there, can't I? So, another tip for you. You had the tip the other day that if you put it glue side down, it sticks better. And now another top tip is put glue on and it sticks better. And no glue. Right, so that's them. <laughs> we will stick it down. <laughs> Looks like I'm playing that game, doesn't it? You've got to find pee under the cup. <laughs> that didn't come out right, did it? No, I'm not even going there now. Right, well that carries on drying. I'm going to find my butterflies to go on. Then we'll put a paper clip and some paper in them, and then they're done. Does that go? No, it doesn't. And you knew it. Stop being silly. Can you see this? Oh, we've gone dark again. This natural daylight thing is a bit annoying. Because it keeps changing. That's far too big and it's the wrong colour. What we got? I did have some that I thought I would like. Oh, that, that one. I like that. Oh, he looks same but bigger. Similar but bigger. What else we got? We got that one. Then they're all a bit too same, aren't they? I want a green one. What's chances of me finding a green one now? I want one. Really slim, I would say. You can never find the one you actually want, can you? Come on. Oh, I found a green, a bluish one. No, that's never been green in all its years, has it? It's never been green in all my years. My only other option is to crack the butterfly book out and fussy cut one. But that could be a painful process. I'm not the quickest fussy cutter when it comes to things like this. I really thought I had more brown ones left. Maybe I've used a lot up. Ooh, what are you? I think I may like you. No, I don't. I don't like you. This is getting painful now. The amount of time it's taken me to pick a flutter by. I'm going to have to fussy cut one. There's no else for it. I really don't like any of those pre-cut ones with this. Right. I've got some that I'll just, I've cut around them. They're just waiting for the final fussy cutting doing. So let's see. What do we got? Ooh, that's gorgeous. Oh, that's green. It's not the right green, and it's too big. That were you, that were nearly there, wasn't it? Blue, orange, more blue. Some huge butterflies. Oh, here we go. Here at one's front book that I really like. That's pretty, pretty. They're all pretty, but none of them are what I want for this project. So, welcome to Jewelers. Let's take an hour to pick a butterfly video. I bet you've all been there, haven't you? All right, sometimes I can pick what I want. I nearly went like that. I can't click my finger. Why did I do that when I cut? That's it. That's as loud as my fingers click. And that's took 52 years of practice. So, just like that. <laughs> or not. And you know, I think I do like that one. I really do. Or that one. But they look exactly the same, nearly. That's another one to add. Exactly the same, nearly. Well, that, you know, that's a bit like my kids, isn't it? They are identical twins, but they're exactly the same, nearly. So, yes. Add that one to your dictionary. Let's fussy cut. 
if I fussy cut a load at once, I do get a little bit better as I go along. My first one's normally the most dodgy. But I always remember, I don't know where I sew it or who told it me. Probably from before the YouTube days. Hold the scissors still and move the paper. It really does make it so easy. And I love these Timolt scissors. That's what that micro serration they've got does it will hold the paper a lot easier so you won't be dropping what you're fussy cutting and i personally like that with this style of moving paper not the scissors yeah i'm using the seven inch scissors i'm going to say that because someone got all excited the other day and thought there were some bigger Timolt scissors available, so I quite zoomed in using my huge ones. And I look back at video and it, it made them look really enormous. It made them look like the size of a sword out at Game of Thrones. It really did. Right. That'll do me. I'm not going to ink round those like I didn't on that because sometimes I think that little bit of white round edge can make your butterfly stand out better than inking it. And I think this is one of them times. Yeah. So I might swap that for that. No, go back. You were right first time, woman. You really was. Oh, that for that. Yeah, because I want to see more of that ticket with green on. Yeah. Right, before I... I stick my butterflies on. We're going to put our paper clips on. If I weren't videoing now, I'd probably stick those under some every for a while, you know, because I've used um, tacky glue rather than art glitter just because it can take a little bit longer to dry. But if it starts to warp while it's drying, just come in and bend it, it'll be right. There we go. Right, for the paper clips, because I don't have a spare piece of six by six, because I managed to make three without mucking them up, this little bit here with the band, I just use one of the bits I'd mucked up on. I'm just going to use something that coordinates and this will do. It's like, says let's celebrate. I'm never going to, I can't see me using that. I don't make the cards I used to. So I'm going to cut a piece that is two inches wide because that's how wide our little things are. In fact, I'm going to go smidgen under just to make sure it don't go sticking out where we don't want it. And then I'm going to cut it. It doesn't really matter how wide you cut it. I'm going to cut it at an inch. No, I'm going to cut it an inch and a quarter just to be awkward. This is what's going to cover your paper clip up. If you make it too small, it's not going to cover your paper clip properly. If you make it too big, it's just going to... Well, I don't think you can make it too big. As long as it fits in, it'll be fine, won't it? You'll see what I mean now when I stick it on. Right, I'm going to grab three paper clips. Chances are I won't find three the same size. Are they a bit big? Oh, they're far too big. That's much bigger than the ones I used last time. Grab a handful. None of my paper clips are in the packets anymore. They're just loose in a drawer. A huge drawer. That's the size I used. So we want two more of those. That's one, two, three, and a couple of spares for when I drop one on the floor. You just know it's going to happen if I don't have a spare, don't you? Right. So I'm going to pop my paper clip on. Depends on the, side, on the size of paper clip whether I decide to put the small end on the inside or the outside. It just does. As long as you get that stuck down, it doesn't really matter. Right. And then I'm going to take this piece of paper here and I'm just going to glue it over. Yeah. So that your paper clip is covered. Right, what glue? What glue shall I use? Um, I can't remember what I used for that. I just used tacky glue. 
Right, so I'm going to put tacky glue all around the edge. And then I'm also going to put a bit of tacky glue, put that down a bit lower, over where the paper clip is so that gets stuck as well. And I do want this the right way up because that will satisfy my OCD tendencies. Although, they don't worry, they don't apply to everything. Don't be looking at my messy desk and saying, what OCD? No. I'm one of those people that my cupboards and everything inside have got to be pristine. <laughs> and if I can't put it away properly, I don't put it away at all. Yeah? Now, I've got a sister who is the exact opposite. As long as everything on the outside is pristine and tidy, she'll just shove, she'll put things in her cupboards with a shovel and they'll all fall on you when you open cupboard door. I mean, talk about opposite. Right, let's do that one. So it's the same again. But oh, that paper clip's not quite... Sometimes you'll get a paper clip that's a bit bent and wonky and that was one of them. So this bit wasn't lying flat, so I've just swapped it. You probably get more like that when you've got them all living loose in a drawer. So yeah, that drawer does annoy me because it used to have every size of paper clip separated. I'm, I'm just, I'm actually a woman of many contradictions because I keep my button colours all mixed. I just like the rainbow look of it. Now I've got a friend and that drives her insane. So, yeah. It used to be funny, it's Bever used to live next door when she used to need to borrow a button or something. It's like, uh, she just couldn't look at it. Right, that's two. Let's put this last one on. I hope you're liking the slightly longer videos with more waffling for a bit. I am just in waffle mode. Waffle, waffle mode. And I did promise you a quick one last weekend, but then I combined it with a waffle. <laughs> you got a quick envelope and then half an hour's waffling after a while. I decorated them, didn't you? I'll try and get back to me doing a quick one on a Saturday. I was too busy trying to sort that live out last week and then I didn't sort it, obviously. I'll tell you what went wrong there. I've watched tutorials, yeah. Uh, I've, yeah, followed the instructions. I've watched YouTube's instructional videos, but what they all failed to take into consideration was that I am a total and utter dummy when it comes to technology. They assumed you already knew some of the basics, which... I need reminding of every time I do something. I'm sorry, but I do. Like basics, like set... The <laughs> they assumed that you would do everything as you would do in other YouTube videos, like set the uh, video to public <laughs> before you went live. Did I do that? No. Why would I do that when it didn't tell me in instructions? Silly woman. So yeah, that's what happened. So you could only access it through that link. Anyway, I'll show up waffling about that. I'm sure I waffled about that in the last video. Right, I've got four little bits of paper here. I'm using my cream paper. Now I've cut these to two inches wide by four and one eighth. Yeah, and I'll show you why I cut that to that. Now, UK and European people, it's because we've got A4 paper and it is eight and a quarter inches wide. Yeah, you've got your eight and a half in the US, haven't you? So, you'll need to, well, I don't know, let's, let's try it. So I'm going to cut this. I cut the other two inches wide and I found it really difficult to get it all tucked in so it weren't sticking out. So I'm going to cut this just under two inches wide. Yeah, I've got four sheets of paper, cutting them all at once. And then I'm going to cut this in half, which will make it four and one eighth of an inch. Yeah, so that makes it even. I'll just 
have a look as we put this in whether doing it slightly longer would still work for you USA peeps. So I'm going to fold that completely in half and it just fits perfect you see. So I would suggest if you're using my measurements on the book cut your letter size paper down to eight and a quarter inches wide yeah before you start cutting your strips or just cut them they want to be just under two inches by um yeah four and one eighth of an inch and then we're going to fold it in half yeah so it just worked out so perfectly that size right some weird noises outside Sounds like a wolf. We don't have wolves in the UK. Wolves. Wolves or wolves, I've no idea. Right, now I've got my trusty little bit of foam packaging. But I don't know what that... It came in some electronic equipment. You know the type. It's that really dense stuff. And I thought, ooh, I'm going to save that flat bit. It will come in handy. And it does. So I'm now going to swap to my regular stapler. What's light looking like? Has it gone dark again? I don't know why it's doing this. That's better. Don't judge me on the state of this stapler. It's older than my kids, but it opens up lovely and flat. And this is how I'm going to put my pages in. You can sew them in across the top. You could put holes in and tie them with a little bow on top if you wanted. But I thought that might just make this overly fussy with all collage and I've put on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to staple it. Yeah. I'm going to staple from the outside so I want my staples to go just on the crease now I'm obviously can't see my crease so I'm going to put more ink on my crease to make it show up that's better so let's line it all up again this time because my other one didn't lie so well I'm going to bone fold my papers am I on camera no So pop them in the crease. I've done it that good now, I can't find middle. Pop them in the crease. That's looking good. Turn it over without letting it slip. And I'm just going to put, I think one staple to be quite honest is going to hold this. So I'm going to do one. One staple just on that crease. I think I'll be in a little bit over cautious for in two in a book that size. And then I'm going to fold that over. I can't use that bone folder. It's my nice one. So I'm going to use... I've got this little knife thing out. I'm going to use its wooden handle. There we go. Yeah, I think one is sufficient. I don't think you need two staples. That's quite secure. And I've put it in a lot straighter than my prototype. So there it is. Little notebook on a paper clip. I've totally forgot which butterfly we're going where. Ah, that were it. Small butterfly we're going on, one with green on. So I'll pop my butterfly on now. There you go. So that's one. Get my other bits of paper. So I've only put four sheets. This is it's copier paper weight. It's the same ream of cream paper. Is it copier or it's slightly thicker? I can't remember now. I normally look at these things before a video so I can remember them. So I'm just gonna ink that up, make sure I can see that. So yeah, you've got eight little pages, eight pieces of paper. But because the way it's opened, you can open it like that and you can write on both sides quite easily. They're just so cute. Cute little nuggins. Right, I've done that. You haven't stapled it in yet, woman. It's another one of them, there is no plan, therefore the plan cannot go wrong days, isn't it? And my other favourite fridge magnet that my mum got me. My life has a wonderful cast of characters. But sadly, there is no plot. <laughs> my mum knew me so well. There we 
Acá. Chakra on in. Oh, which butterfly are going on which here? That was going on there to give a bit of colour and that was going on the green one. Yeah, I, th I think it's a desperate situation now as far as the butterflies go. We really must. I really, we really did want to see the five. There we go. On that ticket. So that's two. Now I'm going to use my other bits of paper that I had from my prototype that are already cut. And if you remember me saying it was they were slightly too wide because I'd done them exactly the same width as my little book. So I'm just going to take a smidgen, a real smidgen off, like a sixteenth of an inch kind of smidgen. There we go. Fold those over. Ink the edge of my book so I can see it. Concentrate on what you're doing this time, Julie. Put the paper in. Then put my one staple in. Yeah, I can't get the Tim Holtz one to open up like this. In fact, it doesn't. I'm quite confident in saying it doesn't. Someone will probably find a way to do it now. But no, it doesn't seem to. Go on, tuck in, tuck in. Yeah, and I'm quite happy with the words being large as well since I put my butterflies on. So, they are just the cutest, aren't they? I really like them. We've got one, two, three. Put our last butterfly on and we are done. Not too bad. 50 minutes, including waffle time. Let's make three books. <laughs> if you weren't waffling and you had your head screwed on straight, I'm confident you could do these in about 20 minutes. Yeah. Right. So there we have it. And that's my original one. Very similar little paper clip notebooks all right so i hope you enjoyed that especially those of you who like a good waffle and i will see you next time thank you bye